Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. And welcome back to theCUBE here in Las Vegas. We're in the Sands Expo here at EMC World 2016 along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and we again thank you for joining us here in our day-long, actually week-long coverage here of EMC's annual get-together. We're with Paul Sundquist right now, who's the Content Management Director for Paragon Solutions. And uh, Paul, thank you for joining us here on theCUBE. We appreciate the time. Um, it's a pleasure. Your company, you, you bring together different solutions, right? Business technology solutions for other companies. Fill in the blanks around that, if you a little bit about Paragon and, and kind of your approach to what you do. Yeah, sure. So we're, we're uh, an EMC partner. We focus a lot on EMC products, whether that's uh, that Captiva or Documentum, uh, InfoArchive. Uh, our, our idea is, is, to, is to help customers really get from wherever they are today to, to the, the New future, which which is very exciting these days because of the D2, uh, the the opportunities that D2 off, uh, offers, the uh, InfoArchive solutions, the amount of the ROI that, that comes along with uh, with InfoArchive. Uh, so we will sometimes we have um, uh, we will respond to a, a, a proposal request, and sometimes we will work with customers that are already. Uh, uh, working with us for different different areas, and we'll give them some opportunities to see a product that they haven't quite seen yet. Try to understand how they're operating uh, in, in the current, and try to understand if there's there's opportunities for them to save some money or to provide greater uh, greater tools for their users. So the problem that customers had, you know, we were talking off camera about how this business mm -hmm. has changed. And you were saying in some ways it has, in some ways it hasn't. But yeah. if I go back to 2006, when the federal rules of civil procedure mm -hmm. changed or came about, sure, the problem everybody had was, oh no, I'm yeah. going to have a smoking gun email and I'm going to get slapped because I can't produce an electronic record. So I got to put everything in an archive. And then the problem became, I got to defensively delete things and yes. you know legal hold and yes. all this sort of mess and the general counsel was kind of uh -huh. running the business. <laughs> uh, has that not changed? Is that still the case? I, How has that evolved? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's changed a lot of a lot of the way people look at data overall, uh, the, the, the entire life cycle of data. So when uh, a, a new record comes into the system, when people work um, on on comments on on a, on a document, when people are are um, uh, storing it after they're finished with it, they have to understand what that data is. So uh, whether or not some of that includes training for people working on the data, they need to make sure that that data is being retained in some way. So the, there's a, a partnership really between line of business users and the IT users who understand both of those things with retention services uh, coming in to, to uh, help apply uh, the, the, the right kind of uh, retentions and, and uh, legal holds and that sort of thing on the data. So uh, technically, where, where companies maybe in the past have just either archived data or they've backed it up, which in, in some ways has been a, an acceptable form of, of, of uh, uh, storing data that's no longer used. Now we have to look at the data in a more, at a more record level format. So if a legal discovery team comes in and they need to understand what, what records do I need to put a, put a hold on, the systems have to be able to support those requests. So, so like retention policies, compliance, all those things, or HIPAA, yeah. Dodd-Frank, you that's name right. it. I mean, you've yeah. got it, that's, that's your, your arena. Well, it, it, yes, uh, you know, I, 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 there's a number of things I work with, but yes, absolutely, that's, a, that's part, of it, part of it. And part, part of it is that, you know, in the past, if someone was was afraid that they might have to retain this for some time, they would just retain everything. So because of the way things are now, where uh, we really do want to delete stuff when it's re when it's hit its retention policy, according to our our procedures, then we want to make sure that just those records that should be 
disposed of, the disposition, go through a disposition workflow, and they're approved by the right people, signed off, and then deleted. So you're talking about defensible deletion. That's right. Um, is that, what's the problem that Info Archive 4.0 is solving, though? It's more than that, right? Or it, well, it is, because you, you, it is solving that. Um, you really have, now, now we're learning with 4.0, with, it, with its new release today, that you really have four different types of retention you can you can apply, and you can go down, right down to the record if you needed to. So if we need to uh, to retain an entire database for seven years or until um, perhaps after a merger, uh, seven years after that merger, uh, we can do that. But if, at the same time, if there's legal holds on, say, three employees in an HR database that we need to retain those three, we can do that and still safely dispose Greater of Greater granularity. Ones. That's correct. How has the mobile explosion <laughs> exacerbated that challenge, and how are your, cl your client, your customers, and how is EMC responding to that? No, that's, that's a great question. So it, with InfoArchive especially, uh, what I'm really excited about is the new rest, RESTful services, because what that provides is access to the data. So we've already gone through an ingestion process and it's in the repository, it's in Info Archive. Now if I need to get to that, I can use the, the new user interface, which is fantastic, but if I need to access it from another system, say a, a mobile application, say a, 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 a HR system or a, a an ERP system, I have web services in order to access those. And one of the areas that Paragon Solutions has worked on is creating microservices in order to create that data, take the data that comes out of Info Archive, massage it in such a way to make it available to those other applications. In this context, do you feel like your, your customer's primary sort of business justification is risk mitigation? Is that the case? Or well, is this is the great thing about Info Archive, is we don't always know that there's risk associated with this data. So we might have an application that we're going to store, we need to archive that, we're, we're going to retain it. And, and a, a great uh, uh, ROI is around application decommissioning. And I, we, when we try to go into a new customer, we usually start with that because the ROI is so fast. It can be within a matter of a couple days, really in order to extract a, a, a database that's currently being used. It's, it's using servers, it, there's a lot of training that's associated with it, there's licenses associated, um, and, and it might be on an old system. I mean, I, I, we, we ran into VB6 applications out there. So, and, and one of our customers has 1,000 applications that they don't currently put new data into. What are they going to do with that? We need to develop some sort of a uh, application decommissioning factory. So There's zombie guys. apps that are sucking resources that, and they don't even know who's using it. So that's that's another great feature of Info Archive is you got these 14 different points of audit auditing that we can now find out. Well, this application really hasn't been used in six months. So, so. identify the value or and lack who's thereof. using it and why they're using it. That's correct. The value. And, okay. and those are the kinds of forensics that you do. I mean, you, you you go in and help them identify maybe their blind spots more or less yeah. and find out they have some. Legacy stuff they could just lop off and not have to hang on to like a pack rat. Well, yes, yes, but that's that's some of the the value prop that comes with Info Archive. Is it's not that hard for us to ingest it, and then you can get rid of your old application. But then six months later, a year later, you can say, well, we're not really using these applications. You can ask uh, Joe in, in accounting, are we still using this application? And he'll say. Uh, not really, not, no, no, I don't really need it. And you check with legal and then now you can get, get rid of it. But in the meantime, you have all that other value associated with it, right? You have, you have your, your compliance associated with it. You have the ability to run analytics if you need to. You have the ability to search at any time. Yeah, and that's, that is really the big change because it used to be yeah. you just shove everything into a, an archive and you really would never be able to go get it. But you could show the court maybe that I have yep. a process. Yeah. <laughs> I have a policy. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> That's right. But, but then organizations begin to realize, well, we need more. Yeah. It's the value of that, it's expensive. You know, I mm -hmm. just drop $30 million on a new system, I'm not getting any value out of it. So how has that evolved? Yeah, so the, um, the ability to, to go in and, um, like I said, quickly, quickly store some of that stuff. Is, is really where the value is. And so, where maybe in the past, we, we, just, we didn't know what to do with it, so we kept it around. 
So now we can actually go through and we have a methodology for all, all of this to try to understand which applications should be archived, which ones should we keep around, what order should they go in, and which ones do we need to dive in a little bit deeper to really understand what is the meaning of the data that, that's inside the repository so that we can extract that and create a record that's meaningful, uh, such as uh, an invoice. Uh, so if I have an invoice, I really need to know all the information that's on that invoice. The company came from the header information, detail information, uh, maybe a, a purchase order information. So all of that might come from three different sources or six different tables within a system. Let's extract that, put that into a, a, a record format so that it can live independently of everything else. What do you say to the customer who says, well oh, Paul, this sounds good, you know, but you know, we're sort of, Comfortable with where we're at, yeah. Um, and you want to? You, what's the line you use? To, to get him to pull the ripcord. The, <laughs> the parachute will open. What, how do you push how, him how off you, the ledge? How do you basically, get him yeah, over right. that edge? Well, I, I, th I think now, especially with with the new system that's fast and it's light and it's scalable, right? We've got a, We've got an info archive for um, that does a better job of being installed in ten minutes. Let's try it. That's that's what I would say. Um, I'm I'm not a salesperson by by trade, so I don't I don't have I don't have the uh, the way to to try to really grip somebody. I'm more in the lines of let's try it, let's give it a shot. I want you to see how easy it is and how user friendly it is, and then you're you're uh, you make the decision. Yeah, so you that's know, really it's not a gimmick you. sell. It's that's a right. What SE does. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm here to help you. <laughs> Do not be afraid. It's that's not right. pulling your own tooth. It's going to be okay. Paul, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank uh, here. you. We appreciate the time. Good luck at Paragon. Appreciate it. We'll continue here on theCUBE from Las Vegas. We're live at EMC World 2016. See you in a bit. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE because you know, the, the discussion is always interesting.